first began um, to conceive of my work as being within the arena of Asian American scholarship um, in probably around 2004, 2005, when I started to co-chair the Asian Asian American Caucus. Um, up until then, my dissertation in my dissertation work, I spent so much time trying to prove that the Vietnamese American students uh, speaking and writing that I had studied in my dissertation um, were rhetorical, trying to validate what they were doing, reaffirm it within composition space, that I realized after completing the dissertation that I needed to interrogate more closely how their work was situated within racial histories within the U.S. Um, so it is about that time that I started co-chairing the Asian Asian American Caucus and started reading more into the Asian American studies in order to balance out my dissertation project. The first time I identified as an Asian Americanist in my work was probably after I had worked with the caucus a little bit. Prior to that, um, I had been doing work on race and I was very interested in race and representation. And I was working with a group that I'd met through the Scholars for the Dream Network called the Mixed Blood Collective. And they were a group of American Indian scholars, and we were exploring issues of uh, history of colonization, uh, language loss, revitalization, and a lot of those themes had um, affinity with uh, Filipino American rhetoric. And so that was the direction that I took to kind of develop my work. When I met Morris Young, he was the first person I met in the field who was doing Asian American rhetoric. Uh, and I realized that there was another way that I could take my work or another sort of set of literature to, to base that in. I also met Rory Ong uh, at, a, at the C's at one point and he encouraged me to attend the Association for Asian American Studies conference and he told me that he thought I would like that conference and it would be good for my work. Um, so I started attending that conference and it was really fruitful for me in terms of meeting other scholars and expanding um, the, the conversations but also the literature I could draw on to situate Asian American and Filipino American rhetoric. The caucus has uh, helped me tremendously in terms of my, my own um, academic life. Uh, in particular, I think early on, even knowing that the caucus was there helped me uh, feel like there was a place for my work. And when I was writing my dissertation, I remember uh, I thought it was so um, above and beyond and completely generous of Morris Young to share his page proofs with me because at the time there really was um, nothing that I knew of that spoke to my interest in Asian American rhetoric or that, that could potentially speak to what I was seeing in uh, the student research that I was doing. There were um, a number of times when the caucus has helped me in my academic life and one key way that it was helpful to me was when um, Lu Ming Mao and Morris Young organized a featured session on Asian American rhetoric. And it was a very emerging field. Keith Gilliard was our respondent and it wasn't something that people had thought about. And so it really was, it was in 2002, and it really was um, important for us to be featured at the Four C's and to be recognized as an emerging field. And I think that was a very important moment in our work. And I think there were a number of people, you know, Three C's editors, who started to see that work as important. I think the publication of representations doing Asian American rhetoric was another important moment, not just the publication of the book, but in terms of how the publication of the book represented longer conversations we've been having for years. And I think that book is kind of a textualization of the way that we had to support each other in our work and, and share resources and uh, comments on each other's work and help build it. One important function of the caucus is to support interdisciplinary work, and particularly when you're looking at um, Asian American practices, rhetoric, rhetorical practices, and language practices, I think that that interdisciplinarity is crucial because you need to historicize that work. You need to understand what other work has already been done in terms of um, that kind of history and those kinds of practices, even if that isn't work that's directly in rhetoric and composition. Um, I think otherwise you risk repeating um, some things that Malia Powell talked about at her um, Four C's address in terms of colonizing practices. and. Um, taking things out of their context and always relying on the same kind of traditions to situate our work. One thing that Therese Gunsetau, Monberg, and, and Stuart Ching have talked about as a need is um, that we, we still haven't had an Asian Asian American chair of Four Seas. Um, we have clear leaders who have been on uh, the executive committee and different committees within the organization and um, clearly have a presence, but it would be nice one day to have a chair who is Asian and Asian American um, who could speak to our concerns and I think the concerns of 
of the other caucuses as well. In thinking about the future of the caucus, it's hard to separate the scholarship, the needs of, uh, that we have in terms of scholarship and the needs that we have in terms of individual member needs and what they need professionally. I guess in terms of the scholarship, I think that the caucus and more broadly the field needs to um, establish more connection between issues of ethnicity and race and issues of language. In reflecting on what the members need, I guess I'd say that the needs vary quite widely because we have um, members who are at very different stages of their careers and even their lives. We have uh, members who have young children and are starting their first faculty positions. We have members who are very excited about graduate school and want to explore many different things. Um, we have more senior faculty who are embarking on second or third book projects. Um, so, so it's very difficult to identify a, a single um, professional need among the membership at this moment, but that, that's something that we can discuss. As caucus co-chair, I think I follow in some very good footsteps. Uh, Lu Ming Mao and Morris Young did a fabulous job of reviving the caucus. Haivan Huang and Nancy Lynn Carls did a great job following up with that and building some other initiatives like developing a website, coming up with writing groups. And I think we're moving toward wanting to have more collaborative projects. Uh, particularly for young scholars who are facing the same things that we were as junior scholars even today, which is how many years later, in terms of their scholarship being recognized in the field and people understanding that there's a body of work that they can also draw upon in rhetoric and composition now. Uh, so we're trying to build more collaborative projects. We're thinking about doing um, a crosstalk in three C's. We're thinking about doing a writing workshop in the future. We've talked about another project on Asian American rhetoric where we look at primary texts in Asian American rhetoric. And I think those collaborative projects are really important for teaching young members of the caucus what it means to develop a project, to work with others, to, to meet those publishing deadlines, and, and how to talk about your work and how to get it read. And, and what the process is like. And I think it also gives them more confidence that they're not alone in the discipline, that there's a, there's a conversation going on, and it's an important conversation, and they can contribute to it.